iOS 12 is finally here, well, at least the beta is. I've actually done a tutorial on how to install iOS 12 beta 1 right here, right now, for free, without the need to be a registered developer. So do watch that video first if you want to know how to install iOS 12 early yourselves. But in this video, I'm going to show you my top 35 plus biggest features and changes in iOS 12 beta 1. So yeah, this is going to be a really long and interesting video, but packed of new features in terms of iOS 12. So grab all those snacks, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Okay, so at number one, we get a brand new wallpaper. So we only get one, this red and blue and orange still wallpaper. And just like with every single major iOS update, Apple has actually removed some of the wallpapers from the previous releases. So we no longer get the iOS 9 one and a few more are missing as well. And then one of the main features of iOS 12 is actually performance improvements. So for all the devices, Apple says that opening up the camera is 70% faster. The keyboard animation is 50% faster as well. And the app launch uh, under heavy workload is actually 200% faster, which is insane. These numbers were actually recorded on iPhone 6 Plus, but according to Apple, every single device performs faster with iOS 12, including the iPhone 10, as well as the iPhone 5S and the iPad Air 1, which is great. And this is, by the way, the first actual iOS release in which Apple has mentioned some actual performance improvements numbers for all the devices. And honestly, my iPhone 10 feels so much faster with iOS 12, so animations are smoother, apps launch quicker. Even though this is just the first beta, I can definitely say that this is a very noticeable improvement over iOS 11.4. So in terms of performance, I'm really, really glad with the results of iOS 12, just beta 1. Really glad with this so far. And FaceTime now supports group calls, which was actually one of the main features it was still lacking. So Apple even outdid pretty much every single video chatting service out there, and they're now offering up to 32 people video calls uh, in the video chat, which is just crazy. So you can even start a FaceTime call from an iMessage group chat without the need to set up a group FaceTime call separately. So this is great. And then we also get something called Memoji. So essentially an emojis of yourself. So you get this very large selection of items and features that you can add to your character. So pretty much everything from changing the skin color to face shape, hairstyle, eye color, accessories, and so, so much more. It's fairly easy to create a character that looks just like you. So I'm loving this feature so far. And speaking of emojis, we actually get four new emojis. So we get a koala, we get this tiger, we get a T-Rex, as well as a ghost. And Apple also added a ton of camera effects and iMessage. So we get lots of stickers to choose from. And then you can even add an emojis that would stay in place uh, in the place of your head. So they would track your head. And this is a really cool new feature to have. Uh, I'm really glad that Apple added this. And speaking of new stickers and, and emoji effects, these would all be available with FaceTime. So you can have a group chat with 32 people and you can all have an emojis or stickers on the top of your head. Well done, Apple. And then with iOS 12, Apple introduced something called ARKit 2.0. So aside from one of the main differences and improvements from ARKit 1.0, which was introduced in iOS 11, is better tracking, and then also the ability for multiplayer. So not only can two or more players play a game of, for example, ping pong in AR, but viewers from the outside can also spectate. This was one of my favorite parts of WWC 2018. This is this is huge. And then the non disturb mode actually got a few major improvements as well. So if you force touch from the control center, you can now enable it until you leave a specific location. And you can also enable it until the evening, for example. And then the not disturb mode also features something called bedtime mode. And here, not only would the notifications be silenced, but you would also not be able to see them on the display. And then when you wake up in the morning, you would be able to see the weather on the lock screen, which is a very, very nice and useful addition in iOS 12. And then the native photos app also got a few improvements as well. So not only does it support automatic sharing now, so when you go on a trip, for example, it would detect friends' faces automatically. And then you can share those photos automatically based uh, on the location but also photo search has been improved as well. So you can now search for more specific uh, things, similar to how it works in Google Photos. The main difference between Google Photos and Apple processing uh, and Apple Photos is in terms of the processing. So Apple's processing is done locally on your device, whereas Google Photos processes everything on their servers. So Google's processing might still be better, but at the expense of your privacy. And Siri now features something called Siri Shortcuts. So for this, you actually need to download a separate app. It's called the Apple Workflow app. And from here, you can create certain automations and assign a Siri key phrase to it. So for example, I can create an automation so that when I get home, my Philips Hue lights are turned on, among with my HomePod uh, playing my favorite music, the not a sermon uh, is off, and my dinner is ordered, for example. So yeah, you can do lots of things with this. This is really, really cool to have. I'll be playing with this a lot in the upcoming days. So this is probably my favorite feature of iOS 12. 
could be. Yeah. And iBooks has now been renamed to Apple Books and the entire app has now been redesigned as well. So the interface is much clearer now and you also get this preview on the front page as to what the last book you are reading was among with quite a few more design changes as well. And speaking of redesigns, the stock app has been redesigned completely. So we not get we now get business and trading news on the front page and now this app is now universal as well. So it works on the iPhone, it works on the iPad as well as on the Mac. So on the iPad, the app looks quite similar uh, to the iPhone. We just get a tab view optimized for the large display. This was actually one of those iPhone apps that never had that we never had on uh, on the iPad. And it's really, really good to finally see it here. And literally the same thing applies to the Voice Memos app, which has also been redesigned and it finally supports iCloud as well. So we also have a full Voice Memos app finally here on the iPad. Now, unfortunately, the iPad still does not feature a native weather app or a calculator app, which is a bit odd. I mean, it's been eight years since the iPad was introduced and Apple has yet to release those basic apps for the iPad, especially the calculator app. Like, how could you not have that on something that's supposed to be a laptop replacement? That's very, very strange. Maybe one day. Yeah. Until then, you'll have to rely on third party apps for that. And the battery usage view has finally been improved so you can now see more details as to what app is using the most of your battery across more than just one week and you even get this new graph that shows you all this also you can now add your student id in the wallet tab it only works for about five universities and they're all us based at the moment but that's still pretty cool to have you can obviously this would work on your apple watch so that's really cool and then one of the biggest features in iOS 12 is actually screen time. So this is not an app, as I thought, not a separate app, but it's a settings in the settings app. So essentially you can see how much you've been using your phone and for what apps. You even get uh, stats such as how many times you've picked up your iPhone as well as your top most used app and your longest session on your iPhone. And then you can even create restrictions for both yourself and your children if you've uh, if you've added if you have kids and you added your kids to the family account and so on. So again, this is really useful to have especially if you're the kind of person that uses your phone a lot. And finally, finally, we have group notifications. Wow, I cannot believe how long it took Apple to implement this. So all notifications from the same app would be grouped into one stack, which you can tap on, and then you can see all the notifications, you can close them, and then you can dismiss, uh, you can dismiss all of them at the same time, which is great especially if you're like me and you're constantly getting spammed by messages and emails. And then portrait lighting has been improved as well on both the front-facing camera as well as the back-facing camera on the iPhone 10 especially. So the front-facing portrait mode was really bad before uh, and this has gotten quite a bit of an improvement. So the iPhone 10 is now creating a 3D mesh of your full face, basically like Face ID does, and then separates the background based on that. I honestly thought that this was how Apple was doing it in the past. I don't know, it seems like this is only, uh, it's only being properly implemented right now. And I do have to say that it actually works much, much better than before. It's still not perfect, but it's definitely improved by a lot. And then the news app has been redesigned as well. So we have a new bottom menu as well as a new browse page where you can select individual news websites and you can get articles just from that specific source. And then something really interesting is that the iPads, they got a big change and that's iPhone 10 like gestures. So now you can swipe up from the bottom to go home and instead of opening the multitasking bar or control center, uh, you would actually activate a control center from the top right, which is a bit strange. This is honestly, this is a massive downgrade for the iPad. iOS 11 merged a multitasking uh, center with a control center, which made a lot of sense on such a large display. Now we're back to the iOS 10 like interface where the iPad is just a blown up, uh, blown up uh, iPhone interface instead of something specifically designed for the iPad. I really hope that Apple fixes this uh, by September with the final release of iOS 12. And then also on the iPad, the status bar has been redesigned as well so that it looks like on the iPhone 10. So we have nothing in the middle and then the clock has been moved to the left. So this is definitely a hint at the upcoming iPad X or iPad Pro third generation, which I've actually done a few videos on. Um, and that one might actually come with a notch. But still, it doesn't make sense for Apple to have this on every single regular iPad. I mean, Apple hasn't added the iPhone 10 interface on their previous generation iPhones either. So just like the uh, iPhone 10 gestures, I really hope that Apple fixes this by September because otherwise we would have literally an empty space on all the other iPads in the middle and then the clock and everything to the left. I don't know, it's just weird. So you apply to the control center. And then a few more changes when it comes to emojis. So you can now record up to 30 seconds of emoji video uh, up from 10 seconds, which is what we had before. And now all emojis support better tracking as well as tongue detection. So. That's a cool new feature. And then on the iPhone 10, there's a new close app gesture. So 
uh, now you no longer need to hold in order to close an app. You can just swipe up, which is pretty much the same as we have on the iPhone 8 and before, which makes a lot of sense. I'm not really sure why Apple had to remove this from iOS 11 on the iPhone 10 only. So yeah, we're back to, to how it was before. And there's a new file format called USDZ that's uh, supported by iOS 12. So essentially you can import 3D objects and then you can view those objects in AR without the need to download and install a separate AR app. So you can simply open those up in messages, mail, and so on. And then if you go to settings, general, and software updates, you'll notice that there's a new toggle for enabling automatic updates. So we've actually had this before with iOS updates. Uh, but this is the first time we've had it on uh, automatic updates for system-wide updates before it was only on apps. So I'm guessing that Apple would be adding a scheduler here as well in the upcoming betas so that, you know, your iPhone doesn't randomly install a big iOS update where you're uh, when you're in the middle of doing something important. Now, Face ID also supports multiple faces, kind of. So essentially, it supports something called alternative appearance. Uh, so in case you change your looks dramatically, such as you wear wigs or I don't know something, uh, this is a very, very useful feature to have. And then QR code scanning in the native camera app has been improved by a lot. So you actually get this square tracker here uh, that would follow the QR code that, uh, that it's detected. And if it sees multiple QR codes, you would actually get multiple trackers. And then Siri finally got smarter. Kinda. So it now supports celebrity facts. Awesome. A much needed intellectual feature to have, along with 40 plus languages in translation and also support for a password search, which can actually be pretty useful. And then also speaking of Siri, Siri has now uh, now has a brand new cool Irish accent. I don't often tell dad jokes, but when I do, he usually laughs. And finally, iOS 12 is actually supported by every single device that supports iOS 11. So iPhone 5s and newer, iPad Air 1 and newer, iPad Mini 2 and newer, as well as the iPod Touch 6th generation and newer. There's nothing really newer than the 6th generation. But yeah, there you go, my top 35 plus biggest features in iOS 12. This video took quite a bit to make. Uh, so yeah, definitely subscribe and hit notifications if you're new to the channel and you want to see more end-up videos like this one. I got a lot of coverage in terms of iOS 12 coming in the next few days, so definitely stay tuned for that. And yeah, let me know in the comments, what do you guys think about iOS 12 so far? What's, uh, what's your top three features? What are your top three features of iOS 12? Do you think it's worth it? In terms of the performance, I'm very, very impressed. I'm, yeah, it, it's it's looking really good so far in terms of iPhone 10 at least. So yeah, definitely give this video a like if you've enjoyed it. To let me know, I'm Daniel, and this was a really fun and interesting video to make. Let me know in the comments also, what videos do you want me to make next? Do you want me to do a video on watchOS 5, tvOS? Mac OS, Mojave, or you want me to do something uh, something different. Videos on, well, not, not the new software updates from Apple, because those might be a bit boring. A bit more boring than iOS 12. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Son of Tech, signing out. Cheers.